This is a tutorial for GIMP showing you how to add depth to your text. If you don't have GIMP, you'll need to go get it at GIMP.org. I'm using version 2.10, which I upgraded to from 2.8. To get started, let's make a new image. I use 1280 by 720 because that's the size that YouTube uses for thumbnails. And most of the time, I'm making a thumbnail for my YouTube videos. Why don't we go ahead and make a thumbnail for this video? Notice I also use 16-bit integer precision instead of 8-bit. That's so that gradients remain smooth even after some degree of processing. If you use 8-bit, you'll end up with problems related to banding. The first thing that I like to do is go to Filters, Render, Noise, Plasma, and just lay down a little bit of plasma. I keep hitting New Seed until I see something that I think is somewhat visually pleasing and well-balanced. Although, honestly, all of them are. That gives us something to work against. So now we have a textured backdrop. Plasma is fun. You can do a lot of things with plasma. So let's mute this plasma a little bit, get some of this color toned down by going to Colors, Colorize. And what we're going to do is we'll pick some sort of a more neutral color. Maybe we'll go with a brown, which technically Technically, brown is just dark orange, so get a nice orange there and drop the saturation and drop the lightness, and you'll notice we now have a brown sort of appearance. And OK. Now it's a nice, dark, smooth texture. Let's go to our text tool. Let's also reset these colors to black and white, black foreground white background, and we'll just lay down some black text, just for fun. What should we type? Adding depth to text in GIMP. I'm going to go ahead and tweak this. We'll make the text larger, and to really know how big I can make it, I'll have to align it. Come over here to your Move tool. Hold down the mouse to get the full menu, and I'm going to change to Alignment. You see the shortcut is Q. Click on your text, and I always make sure that alignment is set relative to image, not first item. Click on your text, and click this to align the horizontal center, and click this to align the vertical center. I'd like to make the text in the middle a little larger, and the text on the top and bottom smaller than that. So let's shrink this top text. I can double click to select a whole word. I can double click drag to select multiple words. And we'll go ahead and make this smaller. And we'll make this bigger. I also would like to put that line spacing back down because I feel like these lines are just too far apart, though maybe not that close. And I want this to be a little bigger. It's not a big deal if adding depth is a little wider than two text, but I don't think that in GIMP should be quite so tiny. Okay, back to align, and we'll do the alignment again to get it centered. All right, so we have black text on a brown background of varying depths. But it's very boring. In some spots, the contrast is not very good. One thing that stands out as obvious, I'm going to hit Control A to select all of the text. We can change the color of the text to be white. And now it's readable. So that's a good step. But this video is about adding depth to the text not just changing the color to white. So what can we do? Well, there are a few options. In GIMP, text is treated specially. Notice how the background layer over here versus the text layer here have very different icons. This is a representation of the picture that is the background, but this indicates that it's a special text layer. GIMP treats text differently, and we can take advantage of that. If you right-click your text layer, and it's coming off the screen, I'm sorry, 
but right click your text layer and find in the menu text to path. It doesn't look like it did anything, but this is where a feature in GIMP that beginners completely don't understand or know about really starts to help. Look at this, layers, channels, and paths. If you click paths, well, now you have a path. And what does that path look like? Well, if I edit the path, the path was created from the text. Let's go back over here to our layers. Uh, I want to not edit the path. I'm going to change to another tool so I don't have to see those dots. So we have a path that's based on this text layer. Basically, it's just a drawing in memory. Now, how can we take advantage of that drawing? How do you add an outline to text in GIMP? Let's make a new layer. Right click on the background layer that's below the text layer and say new layer. And we don't have to give it a friendly name, but I'll just go ahead and call it outline. And the rest should just be okay as is. Okay, now here's where the magic comes in. Make sure over here that your color is set to black instead of white, since you have white text. Make sure that your outline layer is selected. And then go to Edit, Stroke Path. And since we're a 1280 by 720 image here, it's not very big, I'm going to use Stroke Line, Solid Color, Anti-Aliasing. That's all going to stay the same, and usually I believe this is the default. The line width is set to 8 pixels, and that's what we're going to use. So what this will do is the path that we have over here, it will draw a line that follows that path at the width that we specify. If you draw an 8 pixel line, you will effectively get a 4 pixel border because the line is tracing the text, and so half of it will be invisible behind the text. Hit stroke, and we now have a 4 pixel border. If you turn off visibility of the text layer that it applies to, you'll see that it is bigger, which is why we used 8 instead of 4. So we have an outline of the text underneath the actual text. So that black layer behind the text is helping to offset our white text from the background a little bit. This is the simplest, fastest, easiest way to take normal text and give it some separation. But we want to go a little bit further. We want to give it more depth. There are a few more things you can do. Let's go ahead and make another layer. Another empty layer. This time, instead of stroking, we're going to edit Fill Path. Solid Color Anti-Aliasing Fill. It doesn't look like it did anything, but look. You can see something. What did it do? Let's clear this. Oh, now everything behind the text is black. So you have, essentially, a black copy of the text. Yes, it's possible that you could have right-clicked this, duplicated the layer, inverted the color, but it's much easier, since you already have a path, to go ahead and fill that path. If you'd like a little more than what I'm about to show you, you can also edit and stroke path after that, which adds the border area to this big black blob as well. Now, why are we creating this big black blob behind the text that you can't see? This is where the true fun begins. Let's go ahead, this layer that says outline number one, let's change the name of this layer Edit Layer Attributes. Let's change the name to Shadow. We're going to add a shadow underneath our outlined text. And what you need to get a good shadow is a copy of the text, and then you blur it, and then you move it offset. So we'll go with our blob of black text here, Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur, keep X and Y locked, and just drag them up. Notice how there's this ominous dark aura appearing. You don't want too much, or it just starts to kind of become a blob that consumes everything. But you don't want too little. One is not good enough. 
but 37 is a bit too much. So let's pick a nice number that's just enough to get it a little blurrier, uh, somewhere in the 10 area. Okay, so what do we have now? Well, we have a blurred copy of the text. Notice it's blurred and it becomes more transparent at the edges of the blur. Now, how can we take advantage of this? Because we still can't actually see much of that. It's just sort of providing this ugly dark glow that doesn't really help us. That's not adding depth. Where you add depth is you move it offset to the actual text layer. So we'll come over here and we need to bring our move tool again. You can hit M on your keyboard. Bring up our move tool. I always have my move and other tools set to move the active layer rather than pick a layer just because I want to move things that are invisible sometimes. So make sure you have move the active layer and layer set so that you grab the layer that's active instead of, well, let me show you. That's not what we want. Control Z undoes, by the way. So move the active layer and we'll drag this shadow layer down and to the left. That's different, isn't it? Look at that. Now, now we have some real depth. You can move this. If you move it too far, the effect is not quite as convincing. It would need to be blurred more. But if you just move it offset a little bit, about there, and you can actually see, if you look at the box where it, I'm dragging the layer, you can look at the edges in the top right corner there, and how far apart they are to get an idea of how separated it will be. So let's bring it over and down a little bit like that. And we'll leave it there. So now we've gone from flat white text to outlined white text to text that is above a lower layer thanks to the shadow. If you find that the shadow is not good enough, if you see the outlines of the letters a little too much, if you need to make it a little bit less intense, whatever, you can Gaussian Blur again, and if you increase that blur some more, it will reduce the amount of letter detail, although you need some of that just so that it, the shadow continues to look like it belongs to those letters. So I increased the detail some, or the blurring some more, and you can see that I lost a lot of the letter shaping. And it's still there, but it's not as convincing as this, because this still retains the letters. The letters are keeping a nice intense shadow in their shape. So that adds some depth to the back of your text. It's now floating above this brown layer. But we can go a step further. For this, this is where things get a little more complicated because you have to work with layer modes. So we're going to take this text and we're going to apply a pattern to the text so that it's not just flat white text, but instead has some sort of a pattern. This requires you either to pull in a pattern from an external file or to create your own and apply it only to this text. One of the reasons we're starting with white text is because there is a layer mode or a set of layer modes over here, darken only, soft light, hard light, that, that will take this white and multiply especially, will take this white and let you apply the pattern to it easily. So we are going to take this text layer, right click it, and duplicate it. And we'll turn off the original. We do this so that we have a copy that's still in text mode, because once we start applying patterns to the text layer, it will lose the text information. And to recreate it, you'll have to go through all of those steps again from scratch. I always keep a backup text layer lying around just in case. If I have to redo something, I at least don't have to redo the text. Let's go ahead and right-click this new text layer that's visible and discard the text information. Now it's just a raster. You don't see a difference, but it's been rendered out to dots. So now those dots can be modified by something above it. Let's go ahead and get a pattern. New layer. We now have an empty layer over our rasterized text. And here's what we're going to do. Let's pick, um, 
let's pick something fun. Let's go to filter, render, noise, and um, I don't know, any one of these noises would be fun. I want to keep it simple, so let's do simplex. And let's just uh, play with it a little bit. I don't know how far I want to go with it. Uh, yeah, that'll be fine. We'll, we'll just render that. Now, obviously, we can't see our text. So that's not very useful, is it? But here's where it becomes fun. Change your layer mode. And here's a little trick when you want to poke through the layer modes. Click the drop down and then use the down arrow. Every time you use the down arrow, it will show you the effect of the layer mode you've chosen. So you can go through all the layer modes and try them out this way. As you can see, Darken Only provides quite a bit of darkness to the text. Multiply, when you're dealing with white text, has the effect of just overlaying whatever it is that you have onto the white. And yes, it is affecting other things besides the text, but that will go away once we merge down. So try to ignore everything that is not the actual text. For this one, I'm probably going to go ahead and go with multiply. And I think I don't want the text to be black. So what we're going to do is we started with this one pattern, but we're going to need to lower the amount of contrast that it has. We really would rather not have these black blotches, so I'm going to go to Colors, Levels, and you have in the input levels, this is what is currently present, and output levels, and there's not really anything showing in the histogram, but that's okay. The output levels are basically how dark or light the output can be. And if you raise the black, for example, all of the parts that are black will start to lighten up. Thus, you can also achieve a similar effect using this middle slider. This middle slider shifts the midtones towards darker or lighter, but notice the blacks remain black. So I'll reset this. I'm going to pull the blacks up a bit so they're not solid black. And I think I'm going to go ahead and, and make this noise pattern into more of a texture. So let's do, let's do a linear motion blur. Let's go ahead and make it nice and long to kind of clear some of that noise out. And let's play with the angle a bit until we have something that we like. A little trick, once you start sliding angle, if you hold control, it will lock it to 15 degree increments so you can easily find everything 0 to 90 and so on if you want those increments. And I actually, I think I kind of favor something that's a little offset from the X there. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's go with that. Now, I'm not super happy with this because I'm noticing that a lot of it has just become gray and not white. So let's fix that. Let's go back over here to our levels again. Let's tighten them up. Let's get it so that the things that are darker become lighter. So let's pull this top slider, which makes more things lighter. Let's pull this top slider over like this. And the further over you go, notice it peels back all your texture. So we don't want to completely erase the texture, but we do want more brightness. So let's pull it here. Notice how the histogram shows you where the distribution is. So we'll pull it over here and let's move this middle slider to get some but not all of that middle stuff taken care of. Okay, so that's good. Now watch what happens if I merge down. And now it's only applied to the text. This still doesn't look great. So I'm going to undo by hitting Control Z, or you can go to Edit and Undo. And I'm going to add yet another effect. Let's do another layer. And on that layer, let's render a plasma. Yeah, you know, the thing we started with. I render plasmas a lot when I do this. Uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty smooth. And let, let's lower the turbulence. Let's, let's make it kind of smooth. Yeah, something like that. And we can soft light. 
That's looking a little better. I'm just going to go through and look at it. I actually kind of like what that linear burn was doing there. Let's merge that down. Let's do linear burn and merge that down. So now, notice that we lost our layer mode here. But this is the pattern we've come up with, and it, it's still too dark. Let's go back, and I think the burn actually darkened it for us a bit. So let's put a little more brightness into it. And let's cap how dark it can be. That way it all stays nice and pastel bright. And let's switch this back to multiply. And that looks pretty great, actually. I, I think that looks pretty great. Uh, let's see. Now, here's a fun trick. You've got this cool-looking plasma layer, and then you've got the text underneath it that you want to apply it to, but it's still a little too dark. Rather than continuing to go back up here into colors and levels and playing with all that, I'm just going to lower the opacity to let some of the white come through. See, we can go all the way from full white to full pattern. If I lower the opacity just a notch, it lets some of the white come through. But I don't know that I want to go that far. Let's keep it around there. And let's go ahead and merge down. And now you have very colorful textured text. If you don't feel like it's textured enough, there are a lot of tricks you can pull to add more. Filters, noise, pick is actually something I like quite a bit to roughen things up before a blur. So one of the things we can do here is we can pick it, which you notice it gives you all these kind of ugly looking solid pixels that have been mixed up. But what you can do with that is you can then blur it in some way or another. And yes, we've already blurred some, but let's do some more blur. Maybe not linear. Let's play with the blurs we have available. I actually really favor the zoom motion blur if it's done right. And that might actually be the thing to use here. Yep, so notice how the text now has these little lines going through it. That's because the pick function put those pixels down that stood out. And then the blur function causes them to become lin uh, linear lines, whatever you want to say. So merge that down and you'll see your final product. And there you go. Once again, if it's still not bright enough, you can still play with the levels. You can still do whatever you feel is going to make it look better. If you think that the colors should be brighter, make them brighter. And so on. So that's a couple of different ways you can add depth to the text in GIMP. The only thing I have left to do at this point is I need to add some kind of uh, GIMP logo. So I'll do that later. One more thing to do, because I'm going to add this logo, let's add a layer group. And let's drag, and this is hard to do. You have to drag and drop the layer into the layer group. Do you see how you go far enough right that a little line appears above the layer group only? No, that's not the way to do it. See, it can be very difficult. If you drop it wrong, it won't go into the layer group. So move all your layers carefully up into the layer group for your text. Now, the text and its effects have all become part of a single group, which you can collapse. And if you need to do operations on it, you can move all of the layers at once, for example, so that you don't have to go in and tweak each individual one at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and I may move that over and put a little GIMP logo. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do yet, but you'll see. And chances are you've already seen it if you've clicked through to watch this video. I hope this has been helpful. If it has helped you, I would greatly appreciate it if you could look in the links below, look at the subscription options, the one-time payments, you know, feel free to toss me some money. If you can't do that, like, subscribe, and all that jazz. I'm very happy that it helped you, and I don't expect you to contribute anything, but if you can, I would appreciate it. Have a wonderful day, and happy gimping!